It was 2006 at the Magic the Gathering Pro Tour in Honolulu, Hawaii. Craig Jones at 3 life faced off Olivier Rule at 7 with lethal damage on board. And Craig's hand was a char, able to bring Olivier to 3 and himself to 1. The only hope that Craig had was to top deck another burn spell to deal that final 3 damage to his opponent. This was the game state of the final match between Craig and Olivier, and whoever was to proceed in the tournament hinged entirely on the top of Craig's deck. As he passed turn, Olivier stood up in anticipation. Craig Jones untaps his lands, and he reaches for his deck. On top of the deck! Oh, oh it's Lightning Helix! Oh my god! Oh my god! Craig Jones is through to final! This stroke of luck has gone down in TCG history as the top deck of the century. Fortune smiling down on Craig Jones at the precise moment the sword was set to strike was such a rare thing to witness. This game beheld such a spectacle that no other TCG could ever hope to match. Until March 24th, 2024, in the finals match at the Flesh and Blood Pro Tour Los Angeles. After an incredibly long and challenging gauntlet of classic constructed and heavy hitters draft, Arthur Trehay on Dromai Ash Artist faced off Maximilian Klein on a hatchet's build of Dorinthia Ironsong in the finals of the Pro Tour, a finals with 50,000 USD on the line. From start to finish, this game was an absolute masterclass of competitive flesh and blood play. Max began with the best possible way to open any game, Spill Blood, which gave his axes plus two and Dominate. This let him leak damage right away as Dominate made it so that Arthur could only block with one card in hand for each attack. Following this great opening, Max kept up the pressure for the first half of the game, while Arthur gave up life total to establish a board state of dragons. And it is gonna be Hatchet headed towards this Aether Ashwing. Blade okay. Runner goes ahead, buffs that up. Yeah. And that means the Hatchet of Mind is up to the task of clearing that Miragai. And he was eventually successful, stabilizing the game state and forcing Maximilian to play clean up for a few turns. This let Arthur bring Max's life total down while his was relatively untouched. Now though, being on the back foot, now though suffering the life deficit, Maximilian Klein is running out of rope here who can construct these turns that really put the fear of God in Arthur Trahey. What's in the yard? Five is not a comfortable number to be at. But Max clears Arthur's board and starts to put the pressure back on with his consistent axe swings. And on turn 10, with both players at just two life, Arthur was presented with an incredibly tough decision. After clearing a Kyloria on board, Maximilian activated his Brave Forge Bracers and gave his Hatchet of Mind a plus one boost, swinging in for four. In Arthur's hand was a Sink Below, which could block the axe perfectly, a Chromai, Kyloria, and a Burn Them All, which was Arthur's path to victory. If he could get Burn Them All and a Dragon on board, he could deal one Arcane damage the first time he attacked with that Dragon each turn, putting Maximilian, who had no Arcane Barrier, on a two turn clock. All Arthur had to do was stay alive. But while everyone expected him to use the Sink Blow to remain at two life, he instead blocked with his Kyloria and let his life drop to one, giving himself no more buffer to take a hit. And so on his turn, Arthur plays out the Burn Them All, the Chromai, and attacks for three with one Arcane Damage, bringing Maximilian to one. And with a demeanor as calm as still water, Arthur arsenaled that sink below and passed the turn. However, unknown to him, is a spill blood in Maximilian Klein's hand. Are you kidding me? It's the second card from the left. The same card used to start the game was going to close it. Backed up with the blue for pitch and a glint the quicksilver for free go again, Maximilian could swing for four dominate and then five dominate. The sink below in Arthur's arsenal would save him from the first attack, but the second would kill him. At just one life, he couldn't let anything hit, but with no armor remaining and no card able to block for five, Arthur couldn't stop both attacks. But there was one card that could save him. He would have to find exactly Sigil of Solace. It's the only out at this point. Sigil of Solace. A very simple red card that grants three life at instant speed. If Arthur just had this one card in hand, it would put him at four life that if he blocked the second swing for three, he would remain alive at two, only dying if Maximilian had an attack reaction like in the swing. Sigil of Solace was the only chance he had to win, but Arthur didn't have it in hand. All that he had was the sink below in his arsenal, which would let him replace a card in hand for the one on top of his deck. But the chances that the card on top of his deck was the exact one he needed were very, very small. With his life total at one and death staring him in the face, Arthur blocked the first hatchet with an Uvia, letting Maximilian play the Glint the Quicksilver with the reprise effect. Then Arthur plays the Sink Below, blocking for seven and protecting himself from any potential boost to the attack from an attack reaction. And with everything blocked, he activates Sink Below's effect. That'll be covered, here's the Sink. You cannot be serious! You cannot be serious! 
This life solace was pulled off the top. You have got to be kidding me. He has showed no sign of this, no reaction whatsoever. Arthur Trahey has kept himself in it again. In a stroke of pure luck, Arthur drew the exact card he needed to keep him alive. But the game wasn't over yet. Since he blocked the first swing with a card in hand, this triggered Glint the Quicksilver's reprise effect, letting Maximilian draw a card. And if he drew an attack reaction like in the swing, Arthur couldn't do anything to stop it. With the second axe coming in for five dominate, Arthur throws the Asvali in front to block for three and then played the sigil going up to four life. But Maximilian has that card in hand. With the axe already leaking two damage, all he needed was an attack reaction. Maximilian took a second look at that card he had drawn off Glint the Quicksilver, thought for a moment, and then... Maximilian Klein is throwing everything. He says, no reactions. Arthur down to two, and he's alive in this game. Are you kidding? And so, with his opponent at one, and no way to stop arcane damage, Arthur presented the Chromai on the combat chain, triggering the burn them all. What's left, Mitch? What's left? It's just this attack with Chromai. Take it on the chin. Does he have any of those available? I feel like he's gone through all of those. Would have to be a prevention effect. I don't see one. Not a one in the hand. Not a one. It's a grimace. A rueful piece. Oh, the hand is extended. We're in the house of the dragon. And at the head of the table sits Arthur Trahey, your pro to our Los Angeles champion with the most incredible cold shot I have ever seen. Are you kidding me, Mitch? Are you kidding me? He had one out, one answer left in his entire deck. The Sigil of Solace came up from the sink. We might never see, we might never see a moment like this ever again. Just like when Craig Jones top decked the Lightning Helix in 2006, Arthur Trahey top decking the Sigil of Solace is a moment that will go down in flesh and blood history. Making the decision to keep the sink below rather than using it on the previous turn was a move that most people wouldn't have seen, but it allowed Arthur to dig for one more card and get the exact one that he needed. This allowed him to win the game, win a PTI and gold foil, win the trophy and title of Flesh and Blood Pro Tour Champion, and thanks to Flesh and Blood's top deck of the century, he also won $50,000. Feels a little bad for Max though, you know, the poor guy lost out on 50k because of that top deck, but hey, you win some, you lose some. But you know who's not losing Pro Tour Finals? Me, because I'm not good enough to make it into there, but also my beautiful patrons. Patrons like the Giga Chad Saint, Geeks First, Elixir, Vinny, Smokopotamus, John, Ty, James, Chemical, Bryant, Transient Fire, Dark Memoria, and Big Hungry. Then we've got the Alpha Chads, Thomas, Zajima, and Pavel. And finally, there's the Super Chads, Bruno, Thal, Cece, Eric, Ben, and Yogba Doodles 21 Thanks again as always, and stay Chadley, my friends.